It's so good to be together. Feel God. May the Lord come in in the beginning. They emphasized in this meeting uh, praising the Lord. Brother Steve Farmer gave us a, a good message on that. And uh, saying how Brother Dave's life, thats he used the Psalms a lot, and he would encourage people. Praise God. He said, lift your hands up, everybody. Praise the Lord. And so many times... God moved in. The Lord does inhabit the praises of his people. To inhabit something means you dwell there, you live there. And uh, we want the Lord to be with us, don't we? Amber said, uh, she was feeling the Lord and said, he's not, he's not left us. Well, he'll never leave us if we don't leave him. And we've not left him. We're still here with him, aren't we? Desiring his will and desiring to learn his will. And Sister Alice, we are in a transition period. That means we're changing. Change is not easy. Um, you know, you get used to a certain way things are done. Uh, you get used to a certain group of people. I've gone through transitions before. Uh, I've lived in the body long enough that we transitioned in 1965. We changed. Uh, in the 70s, we changed some. I remember feeling uh, a little anxiety over brethren coming in. We had new brethren come in. Brother Nick Gruick brought them in. And uh, it was Brother Baxter from Portland, Oregon, and Brother Dial from, from Florida, and Brother uh, Lafleur from North Carolina. And uh, I thought, if these men come in, they're going to change us. <laughs> and we're not going to be the same because we had, a, I knew all the ministers and all the churches, and we had a general minister's meeting, Sister Alice, in Cape Girada, on, on Benton Street, and it held them all. Uh, so that, that was a little, little scary, thinking, well, they're going to change us. And it did, but it changed us for the good. And that that's taking place now, I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest change we've ever went through. And it's going to be good. And it's going to draw us closer to God. And it's going to draw us closer to one another. But it's, it's still going to be difficult for us as an assembly, as a body. The body of Christ has relatively been small my whole life. And God has not permitted us, let me turn back to Haggai just a moment, God has not permitted us to, to do what we saw was going to be done. You know, when you're working on a job and you see the blueprints, and sometimes they have a, 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 a 3D dimension of what it's going to look like. And you say, oh, that's going to be really nice. I'd like to see it finished. <clears throat> but you can work on it for years and years and years. And there are some big projects that men have done, especially when they didn't have the proper tools and build these big cathedrals and castles over in England. It would take generations. But they kept working on it, knowing someday it was going to be finished. 
Well, we've worked several generations now. Beautiful people. Sacrificing. Coming together. And building all that they could build in their day. God limits us to what we can. You can't build the latter rain until the time comes. Here in Haggai, Brother Shea was reading, and I thought he did a good job today. I appreciate him speaking here. The, the Jews had come back to build the, the uh, city back and to build the temple back. But the, the Samaritan jealousy, Sanballat, Tobias, Gershon, they, they stopped the work. Nehemiah came and threw them out and began the work back, but, but because of the Samaritan jealousy, because of the lack of being able to accomplish anything, they just quit working. And when Nehemiah came, he saw the distress that the city was in, and he knew why. That's why when they started building and these men said, let us help, they'd already hindered the work. And he said, you're not going to have any part in it. But those people, if I would have lived in that day, if you couldn't get everybody to work together, you couldn't build. Somebody would come up with more against it. Somebody would stop it. And during Haggai's time, the Lord said, it's time to stop doing what you're doing and start doing what I want you to do. You know, it's kind of distressing to me to think maybe we did a whole lot of things, worked real hard, sacrificed a whole lot, and God wasn't in it, maybe. It, it wasn't what God was wanting us to do. The Lord sees if you sacrifice anything to God, God sees your heart. But if that's not what God's wanting, then it doesn't accomplish for you what you want it to accomplish. But he said here, that guy was sent as a prophet. He said, the time is not, thus saith the Lord in verse 2, this people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Well, I'm telling you, we've said all the way along, it's time to build God's house. But how do you accomplish it? You know, if you've got a crippled hand and you're missing some fingers, it limits you to how you can labor and work. If your arm is weak, Our elders were great men of God and there were great women of God, children of God, and they lived and they died for this message. Mama, they lived and died for the message. They, they strove to live an overcoming life and make the bride, and some of them did. There were bride members come out of the dark ages even. But there's a harvest time coming. The latter rain and the latter harvest. For many will make it. But when the rebuilding of the temple that Haggai's talking about typifies or foreshadows the rebuilding of the Lord's spiritual house, his church, in these last days, his body. That's a note from Brother Mears. That came back from years ago. Brother Sodders taught that. Revelations 12, 
The woman came under attack, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. That's the body of Christ. But it fell away. It went into the wilderness. Said she fled into a wilderness where she was nourished for a time, times, and a dividing of times. For 1260 years, the church existed in a very limited state. And during the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and others, when that time ended, it was a time of, of Nehemiah, the cupbearer for the king of uh, the Medes and Persians. And they came back to rebuild the temple. Well, the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, Babylon held captive God's children during the time, times, and the dividing of time. And, and Haggai received word from God, the time is come to build God's house. And our, our brother Sodders, they understood in his day that that time had come. And he wanted to see it done. But before Nehemiah and those others could rebuild the temple, Shay Daniel, rubble was all over. And I'm going to use the term Babylonious rubble was on the on the the temple site. <coughs> all the doctrines and teachings and and the order and operation of, of Babylon was covered up covering up all the truth. And they begin to dig out the stones. Thank God they dug out the stone of resurrection. They dug out the stone of Godhead, who God was. They dug out the foundation stone of charity. Brother David, understanding that. But here you had all them stones that had to be put together. And without doing it, here's the condition of the church before it was finished. That guy went on to say, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste. Sealed houses was the individual churches striving to exist in a time when people didn't work together. Sure, you might get your son, you and your son John and his son and a few more. You might get four or five churches, half a dozen churches working together in one area. But the body of Christ is, works all the way around the world. It's not Texas churches. It's not Canada churches. It's not California churches. It's not Mid-America churches. It's all the churches of the body of Christ laboring together. I grew up, I told them the other day, I grew up on a farm, Mama. In the wintertime, they didn't go out and combine. They didn't reap. They didn't go out. The combine said empty. They might grease it and, you know, clean it up some. They didn't go out and put seed in the, the planter and take it out in the field. And they cleaned it up some and got it, was getting it ready for the spring. <clears throat> But they had a garner and they had some feed in it and they'd feed the livestock. God's had a garner and he's fed us through the years. 
but to implement the fivefold ministry and to implement the latter rain, it takes God to say, Today's the day. Now's the time. Rise up, my love, my dove, my undefiled. It's time to rise up to, to the job that's to be done. One thing that was said in this meeting that struck me is a good thing, to, a good saying. One of them said, pray. Will every one of you pray? God, give me one person to talk to you about Jesus. One person. Said they may not be in church, but give me one person to win for you. And he said, if you do that, you'll find out you're going to win more than one. But be interested enough and desirous enough, Michael, to give some of your time to God. God, give me one person to win. And you win that one person and you can see the church grow. You see people come in. The body of Christ is going to grow in the future faster than we may like it. People come in and make us like I was in 60, uh, well, that was in the early 70s. When people start coming in, hey, they're going to change us. We're not going to be who we was. This is going to make a big difference. I don't know these guys. <laughs> I don't know these guys. And I don't even know if I like these guys. I ain't been around them long enough. But it was God. Blessing the church in a period of time when we were trying to hold together. Do I pick up a stone and throw at them Jews that was building their sealed houses? Say, ah, oh, they should have been doing better. Why weren't they building the temple? Why weren't they getting busy for God? They should have worked for the Lord. I believe they were they come there to work for the Lord and they couldn't get anything accomplished, but they stayed at Jerusalem. They stayed at Jerusalem. And it was winter time and they was trying to exist. Our elders stayed at Jerusalem, the inhabited city. They were striving to rebuild it. They were getting out the, the foundation stone, say Daniel. And they had their own houses, their own assemblies, and they were trying to keep them alive. In a very bad period of time you could either say winter time you could say the red horse period the red horse period was a period of sin and division babbling on the outside and babbling on the inside sure sons of God come together and Satan come among them that happened Is it time for you to dwell in your sealed houses and the house of God lie waste? Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Stop and examine yourselves. Consider how you're building. You've sown much, you bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but there's not filled with, you're not filled with drink. You're cold, but there's none warm. You earn wages, put it in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. Go up the mountain. Bring, bring people. Bring wood. Build the house. I'll take pleasure in it. I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You look for much. 
God will be glorified if it if it's done for his glory and not man's glory. You look for much and lo, it come to little. When you brought it home, I blew upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste. You run every man to his own house. Therefore the dew over you is stayed, and the earth from her fruit. I'm telling you, our elders worked in a very difficult time. They did not ask to be born in the winter. They did not ask to be born in a red horse of sin and division. And I'm telling you, they built houses of worship for God, but they weren't able to look hook house to house. They weren't able to build a wall. A brother uh, from California, uh, Hawkins, built, wrote that song, We're build We cannot come down. We're building a wall. With a sword in our hand, we'll answer the call. God give him that song. And he's not even with us today. I pray God they'd be back with us someday. You might say, well, they should have did more. Them Jews should have did more in their day. Our elders should have did more in their day. Well, live in their day and see how much you could have done. Zechariah, the 8th chapter. I'm saying this, I want to give honor to our elders that labored in the day they labored in. If you work in the springtime, say, look how much I'm accomplishing. Said the ones before me during the winter, they didn't do anything. They got the combine ready. They got the seed ready. They had seed to plant. They got the operation, the farm. Their lifespan just didn't allow them. If our elders was here and seeing God moving as he's moving, they would have built a wall. They would have preached the messages. They'd have lived a life. Haggai. Or Zechariah. Zechariah 8 and 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands, let your ministry be strong. Ye that hear in these days, it was a changing, a transition, these days. These words by the mouth of the prophets which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid that the temple might be built. Get on with the job. You've heard about it. We've heard about it. They've preached about it. We've heard the words from the mouth of the prophets which were in the days that the foundation was starting to be laid. For before this day, before this transition, before these days, there was no hire for man, any, neither any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. The affliction came because they had been building their own homes for around 16 years, say Daniel. For I have set, God did it. God set men at ought. Boy, what a, what a understanding. God wouldn't let men build his kingdom with the carnal approach. 
God wouldn't allow it till the woman come up out of the wilderness. And we thought we were out of the wilderness when Brother Sodders came. In Revelations 11, it said the two witnesses lay dead in the streets of Sodom and Egypt. And said after three and a half days, they stood on their feet. Well, it took them a while to get up, I'd imagine. Brother Steve Farmer said, we're not, in, we're not down dead. He said, we're, we're not up. He said, but we're getting up. We're getting up. Woo! Thank God. I heard the vision and the message of the elders, and I thought, surely it's going to happen any day, any time here before long. One by one, those men went off, but their message stayed. Hallelujah! Their vision stayed. Hope deferred makes a heart sick. I've been heart sick because my hope was it would that they'd do it, but it wasn't to be done by them. They didn't ask to be born in the early late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Sister Kathy, they they didn't have no. They could only live in the period they was born in. And this period of sin and division. I didn't ask to be born in 1952. Mama, I didn't ask to be born in that year. But that's when I was born. And I've seen affliction after affliction after affliction. And I've loved God and served God through it. And I watched my elders be in afflictions and serve God and stay together. At least they stayed together with a vision that someday we're going to be able to build the latter house. For I have set all men Every one against his neighbor. God has had his hand in these things. It's hard to imagine that God wouldn't let us work together and have peace. It just seemed like when we had almost, almost get going real good as a group of people, we'd blow out a tire. <laughs> Something had happened. Somebody would leave. Somebody would raise up. Some division would occur. And there we'd go back down. Try to come back up and go back down. Boy, that's discouraging. That's heart-wrenching. See people leave. Wonder, be gone 40 years. Here they come back. From 1965 till... Forty years later is like 2000. In, around in the early 2000s, God began to bring back together. And, and God did it. We couldn't do it. And it's amazing what God has done. God said every man again. I have it wanted to be against any neighbors I haven't hated people I wanted but we were limited in what we can do but oh God when he comes in when the Lord changes things for I've said every man everyone against his neighbor now that's a sad message if that just was forever but now Next verse. The transition. The time that the house of the Lord should be finished. But now 
I will not be unto the residue. You know what a residue is, Mama. That's like a remnant. You're cutting out some material and you're making something and there's some left. That's a remnant. That's a residue. It's smaller than when you started. You may have a big bolt of material. Now you got a small bolt. I will not be into the residue of this people as in the former days. I've lived in the former days. From 1914, Brother David, to 1952. How many years is that? Huh? Somebody give me the answer. 1914 to 1952 is what I'm wondering. 38 years. 38 years. 38 years I wasn't in the body. I wasn't born yet. 48 years in, uh, or 50 in 1964 is when I was born again. So the, there was 50 years there I wasn't in the body, but I've been in the body ever since then, and it's over 50 years. So I've been in the former days. And I knew men that were in the days before then. And I knew their heart. I knew they wanted to see the vision and the building of the body of Christ. And I knew they suffered the afflictions. Even if they wanted, even if they had a good heart, they couldn't do it. They suffered the afflictions of God not letting it come together until we learn how to do it in charity and in brotherly love. But now, here's, here's a promise that we can expect. But now I will not be into the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts, for the seed shall be prosperous. And my note said of peace. There'll be peace. The vine shall give her fruit. The ground shall give her increase. The heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all things. And it will shall come to pass as ye were a curse. Huh. We were a curse among the heathen. The unbelievers. The heathen could see the division and this brought a reproach. To say we're of the body of Christ and we love one another and we can't work together is a reproach. But he said it's not going to be like that now. You'll no longer be a curse among the heathen. That means there's peace and unity and working together of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. So will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Verse 16. These are the things that ye shall do in this transition, in the building of the body of Christ, in the latter reign. Speak ye, every man, the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor. Love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, <laughs> saith the Lord. That's for us today. 
Let none of you imagine evil in your heart against your neighbor. That causes mistrust. The opposite of unity is division. Cause division causes strife. Don't imagine evil in your heart against your neighbor. Love no false oath. Don't let anything be said or done to cause the tearing down of God's house and of God's children. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. God, it's time to build your, house, your latter house. And I pray that you let us be a part. Don't automatically think, what well, we're, Jesus said, you say, you feel secure and you say, we have Moses. We have Abraham to our father. And we have the, 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 the word of God. He said, the word is that that speaks of me. Don't, don't feel secure. Say, God's got to use us. No, he, God don't have to do anything. I've heard people say, I'm going to fast and pray and I'm going to make God answer me. You don't make God do anything. I'm going to obligate God we have to do it. No, you don't. God don't owe you nothing. Mercy and grace is undeserved. When God shows you grace, you can't say, I deserve that healing. I deserve that blessing. No, everything God gives you. Someone said today, every breath you take. Who was that? Every heartbeat. Sister Kathy? Yes, thank the Lord. Every time your heart beat, it's God. Every time you take a breath, that's God's air, and He's letting you breathe it, letting your body work. Everything. You take a drink of water. Thank you, Lord. You eat a bite of food. Thank you, Lord. Said, well, you, you, you worked a job and earned that money to buy that food. God give you the strength to work, the mind to work, and God, God made the food. Farmer might have grown it, but God's one that made the seed. And it's his land, his dirt. So you can, you can thank God every time you take a bite, every time you breathe. It's hard to tell God thank you for breathing because you take two or three breaths to tell him thank you, and then you have to thank him for them three breaths. So just, Lord, thank you for today, for your mercy, your love, your grace, how good you are and how great you are.